First thing I'm going to do is say hello to Bangalore. Uh, I've been in India, this is my eighth time. Most of my time spent in the north. It was really exciting to come here to the south. I think this is considered south India. All right, yeah, I'm sure. If there's anyone from Chennai or Tamil Nadu, Kerala, I don't want to step on your toes because I know that's really south. But anyway, and I love the train system here. So I just want to start with that real quick. So I want to ask everyone a question, and do you work with co-located teams? Like how many works with teams that are either in your same country, same state, or around the world. And how many of you have worked where your design team is spread out around the world? All right, so hopefully you'll have a better kind of experience than I have, because what I want to talk about today is not necessarily a love story. It's more like some of the problems and things that can go wrong and then some of the things that can go right. So a uh, little bit of background on me, uh, user researcher, product strategist. I live in Seattle, Washington, spent time in these places significantly. Uh, I'm currently, I have this title of T-Mobile, which is a telecom company, but I'm actually a researcher. And they don't have this title yet, so anyway, not really a designer. Um, and I love these things. This is the greatest invention in the world, Gold Jamin. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone has Gold Jamin, please, I'll do a dance for you. Uh, so I got into... My other background before technology, I was a chef. And I worked in a couple of restaurants in New York. And one of them was near a restaurant that Anthony Bourdain worked at. So we didn't have the same friends, nor the same cocaine habit. But, uh, you know, at least I was a chef. But anyway, I wanted technology because I started, a friend turned me on to this show. Did anybody know this show? What these guys are from? They're called Cybermen. Anyway, it was the idea of like AI, machine learning, and just technology in general. And that scares the Jesus out of me. I don't like technology. I'm sorry for all you guys that probably do. But I want to learn how to master it. And so one of the things I got into was, uh, you know, if I got into be a designer or researcher, maybe I can help control the machines. And so why does that matter? Uh, well, for me, machine learning and some of the case that I'm going to talk about today has to do with the fact that we have a lot of opportunities and a lot of, as designers, to create experiences with a lot of what would be considered science, right? And some of that can be in environmental science and some can be machine learning and, you know, algorithms and data scientists. So what we set out to do in this project, this thing is kind of weird, uh, it was to create a predictive analysis application using big data and AI to help petroleum engineers better understand how to manage field health. So. One of the things that we worked with, along with the predictive analysis patterns that, say, they would use, was we started working with predictive UX. Does anybody know what the predictive UX is? Uh, anyone know? OK, so that's basically the definition. But it's kind of this. I mean, this is a perfect example of Google, predictive UX. And so one of the things we were looking at with our product was to help the user through, obviously, machine learning algorithms and data science, but then also surface UI that would you know, allow them to make better choices. Um, so, because a lot of our end users were not technical at all. Um, so. so, everybody knows this guy. So the other second part of my talk a bit will be agile and lean. And agile, this is the first thing I think of when I hear agile is Lionel Messi. Or Serena Williams, you know, a famous tennis player. Um, and this Agile UX is kind of a new thing, uh, probably not so much anymore, but the idea of you know, how to design in an Agile environment or team. And uh, a couple of people I've talked to so far mm -hmm. since I've been at this conference has talked a bit about uh, you know, Agile UX, but then also Lean UX. And so how many people feel that they effectively do this in their practice? Uh, particularly this. Last one. 
So, all right. So this is a quote about the plan, and that's what we're going to talk about today in the case study is, you know, you come in with a plan, eventually, you know, Mike Tyson, right? Uh, so with that being said, so this is agile versus lean. So a lot of people, you know, probably, at least for me, you know, my bosses, my product managers, PMs, they're always talking about agile, and then we come along as designers and researchers and say, well, no, lean. We want to focus on, you know, people. We want to focus on measuring experiences and our methods and, you know, creating an MVP versus a lot of this other stuff that, you know, Scrum is either rugby or it's agile. There's no, you know, to most people it doesn't matter, right? Uh, so on to the problem. So I like to call this, or what we call this, was a 17,000 feet problem. Uh, gain at proven reserves of oil is really expensive. Gain at unproven reserves and new reserves is even more expensive. And all the oil fields in the world are dwindling. Now when they'll run out, I know, but I'm not going to start any rumors. Just working in the oil and gas field. Um, don't worry, we'll all be driving lots of cars for a while. Um, and the biggest problem with oil and gas and you know, maintaining wells is when they become shuttered or they stop working. And that can be a really expensive problem as well. And so what we, what we started working with, a few Gulf oil companies, was to work with you know, petroleum engineers and hardware creating all these sensors. And this sort of, and of course, we're all heard of internet of things by now. And on a, any given well, there can be almost several hundred sensors. And they're send, constantly sending data uh, about everything through the oil, upstream oil process. And so what we wanted to do was we wanted to make, create visual tools that help the well engineers and business make the best decisions for both profit and then worker safety. Um, unfortunately, we set about with our client to make a one-size-fits-all application because they wanted to build it. They were using one Gulf company's uh, example and then they're going to sell it to all the rest. Um, so, we, yeah, just, um, so how do we fit Lean UX into our process? Um, we start out with a really cool co-located uh, co team from around the world and I'm totally frozen. That dude rocks. You know, like Iceman on like speed. Uh, but we had three problems we're trying to solve is we needed to get requirements and we need to understand what the customer needed or wanted while they were still trying to figure that out. Uh, we had geographical issues giving our SMEs that were spread all over the place and we had a very short deadline, like six weeks to come up with a design idea. Um, we estimated based on our previous experiences of just being designers, it's probably going to take about three times that. So what we ended up doing was we split our design team. So we split it regionally between Chennai, Houston, and Dubai to hit different SMEs and you know, get, to the, get to users faster and sort of develop faster. Um, because we need to rapidly design, we need a rapid prototype, we need to iterate fast, and we wanted to do it around the clock, which it sounds great for business. That was one of our selling points. But for designers and humanists and you know, people of empathy, we realized that all our designers in these different locations had different experiences, different life goals. Uh, they could bring different diversity to the table, and we figured that would make it stronger. Um, and so uh, we had uh, the team make up, just there were about three designers in each location. Um, our biggest thing was to figure out who was going to do what and how we were going to do this point. Um, and we had also concerns around you know, cost and logistics, traveling, visas, things like that. And so we sort of figured out who was the fastest person that could get into a particular theater the fastest, and then you know, work through the iterations. Um, sounded pretty good, right? I mean, it's like we got a rapid, cool team, like the Incredibles, we're doing all this stuff, we got this process, and you know, all that great stuff. Well, the problem was, is that in this whole idea, we actually forgot to tell people what they were supposed to do. And so we, we handled the research part okay, but when we got to the actual design part, we started wasting, we, people just kind of went crazy. So everybody was working on the same thing and we didn't really coordinate that and so we were kind of wasting a lot of time. Um, and part of our also problem was that the features with the MVPs were being added and subtracted daily. So, you know, we're, we're trying to work on that. So what we ended up doing was we had this problem. 
You know, like, have everyone seen this movie? Jeff Goldblum has the perfect plan. Save the kids. Plan goes too well, and wah, you know, he's running and screaming, as he says. So that's what we need to do. We need to get under control. So, uh, you know, we just called a timeout. Designers went on strike, and we said, we're not going to do any more work until we work to the SMEs and the product owners to figure out what exactly you want. Um, that didn't go over so well, as you can imagine. But uh, the first, our first problem to worry about was they wanted to design this application for all multi-platform, omni-channel experience. And that just doesn't work, especially in six weeks. So we ended up choosing the web. And how we solved the problem of this design of randomness is we, we put some people into a room. And we started to think about this. So is everybody familiar with the release train map? Like a iteration of design? Obviously, that's where you're trying to get to, but it doesn't always work that way. Um, so, so the one thing that was going really well for us was user research. So we decided that, OK, we can actually go out and find the things that people need or want, maybe faster than the business can. And so we, we took that risk and that gamble. And for the most part, it paid off. You know, we understood like, what the heuristics and what people were doing. And the one thing that we got to really quickly was, all these oil platforms around the world in disparate conditions. You know, so some are in the North Sea, some are in the Gulf, obviously hot, cold. Uh, there's day and night shifts, so we had, there are a lot of things to think about in terms of like, our application that way. We had rig workers with gloves on, and we ended up coming with like, technology that we'd sew into the gloves so they wouldn't have to take their gloves off to use the application. Um, so that's just some of the research stuff. So we sort of adopted this model of participatory design from Leo Fishberg, and we decided we'd just start iterating and sketching ideas as fast as possible and just get them in front of users. Um, this worked out in a way where we, we set a core team to make the framework of the application, and then we got our other people to you know, sort of iterate on these internal points, the graphs, the data visualization elements, things like that. Um, so we did a lot of prototyping. We did like paper prototyping. We did Oxford prototyping. A little bit in vision, you know, pretty much every tool out there. But the one thing that we did that worked out really, really well was this idea of like just quickly whiteboarding ideas in front of uh, business owners, SMEs. And so those are some of our sketches of just, you know, quickly doing this. Now, the downside of this was, you know, it had the upside of rapid prototyping to get to the point. The downside was, if you have a diverse team spread across the country, not everybody can, or world, not everybody can see us at the same time. So yeah, we solved that just by using Envision. We just copied those out, photographed them, put them in Envision, and just kind of caught everybody up. And then once we would built the framework, then we were able to sort of seamlessly divide up you know, some of the, the like, well diagrams, mapping, things like the internal stuff. Um, so we got into a cadence in about four weeks in out of six weeks. And uh, you know, we started committing to the features, and we started designing. Uh, 